everyone, and before we start the video, I have to say that we have hit 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for your support, as is the tradition with milestones. I'm going to do a Q&A video, so if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Today we are looking at America's self-proclaimed emperor. Much like the captain of Copenhagen, donned a military outfit and managed to win the admiration of the people around him. Born Joshua Abraham Norton in England in 1818, spending most of his early life in South Africa. Norton arrived in San Francisco in 1849 after the death of his parents. Initially Norton made a living as a businessman, but lost his fortune on a failed protracted lawsuit regarding a contract for Peruvian rice. Destitute Norton became penniless, filing for bankruptcy in 1848. The bank foreclosed on his estate, leaving Norton living in a boarding house for the working class. Norton, not happy with the situation that he had found himself in, sent out letters on the 17th of September 1859 proclaiming himself Emperor of the United States. One such letter read, At the request and desire of a large majority of the citizens of these United States, I, Joshua Norton, formerly of Algoa Bay, Cape of Good Hope, and now for the last 9 years and 10 months, past San Francisco, California, declare and proclaim myself Emperor of these United States, and in virtue of the authority thereby in me vested, do hereby order and direct the representatives of the different states of the Union to assemble in Music Hall of this city on the first day of February. Next, then and there, to make such alterations to the existing laws of the Union as may ameliorate the evils under which this country is labouring, and thereby cause confidence to exist both at home and abroad in our stability and integrity. Finding the event hilarious, the editor of the San Francisco Bulletin reprinted the letter. On the 12th of October 1859, Norton issued a decree abolishing the US Congress. In February 1860, Norton summoned the army to overthrow the US elected officials at Washington. Unsurprisingly, none answered to his call of arms. He issued many more decrees during the 1860s, although this very much went ignored due to the American Civil War. In 69, he ordered the dissolution of both the Democratic and Republican parties. He also told the Catholic and Protestant churches to order him emperor, as well, why not? Even though the US government didn't acknowledge the emperor, many San Franciscans treated him as a celebrity as he walks the streets inspecting the pavement in his spectacular blue uniform topped off with a beaver skin hat decorated with peacock feathers. He would even examine the police and cable cars of their presentability, often talking on philosophical matters to anyone within earshot. Norton would frequent many of the finest restaurants in San Francisco, even though poor. As a handwritten seal of approval from the Emperor was highly sought after, as it gave a boost for the business of any restaurateur lucky enough to receive one. Many eateries and restaurants had brass plates made up inscribing, by appointment of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Norton of the United States. Norton was said to have had two stray dogs named Bummer and Lazarus, whom were famous in their own right due to their ratting ability and general good nature although it's not known if the dogs were Norton's actual companions. The cartoonist Edward Jump had often depicted the Emperor with the two in newspapers, however not many contemporary reports had confirmed it beyond Norton feeding them the odd food scraps. Norton even got the best seats in the house for any play or musical. Even during the riots, Norton was known to stand in between the belligerents until violence subsided. Norton had become a local celebrity, even receiving a pardon from the Chief of Police after being arrested for insanity. In 1870, a census recorded the 50-year-old Norton's address as Commercial Street and his occupation as Emperor. It was also added that he was insane. Norton issued his own currency to pay off his bills. It even became an accepted local currency, issued in amounts of 50 cents to $10. On the 8th of January 1880, Norton was making his way to a lecture when he collapsed passing away in front of Old St Mary's Church. He died a pauper with only around $5 in small change on his person and a few possessions inside his boarding house room. Some 30,000 residents turned up to line the streets for Norton's funeral, whom had a coffin made of rosewood paid by the San Francisco Businessmen's Association and was buried in a San Francisco Masonic cemetery at the expense of the city. Thank you very much for watching this plainly extra episode. 
Once again, if you have any questions for the 10,000 subscriber Q&A, leave them in the comments below. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching.